Good morning and welcome to the Kingston Congregational Church, the United Church of Christ. My name is Margaret Bradley, representing the Board of Deacons. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a few opening announcements. The flowers today are given by Cindy and Jim Buxton in loving memory of Cindy's parents, Bob and Jane Pratt, and Jim's dad, C.M. Buxton. Jim Findlay of the Board of Missions and Social Justice reminds us of this year's giving opportunities, which include the Christmas collection, which serves local, regional, and national charities, and the gift card, gift card donations for local charities. Um, and we are encouraged to buy script cards and today is after church at the church is one opportunity to buy script cards. Our third announcement is from Michelle Girasol on Sunday, December 20th from four to 7 p.m. Kingston Congregational Church invites you to experience our candlelit peace path of luminaries for our Lights of Hope community event. Purchase luminary kits which include four bags with four LED candles at $10 each online or mail a check. Proceeds will serve local children in need. Good morning, friends. Again, welcome to this service of worship. It is a communion service today being the first Sunday of the month and I invite you to bring whatever elements are most suited for your home communion with us here at church. We begin with our call to worship. John the Baptist said, prepare the way. So family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We silence the inner critic. We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, the sight, the feel of the space we're in. We breathe in God's mercy and exhale God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves to this moment. We open our hearts to the world. We trust that even now God is here. Family of faith. What we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship our God. Our opening Advent hymn, lift up your heads, O mighty gates. Oh, 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 oh,
the invocation and the Lord's Prayer. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering a crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we would know peace. However, more often than not, we are a jumbled mix of many things competing for our attention. So today, we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. We'd like to trust you more fully. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully, we pray with Jesus this prayer to be yours. Our Father, Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On this second Sunday of Advent, we are those who dream of peace and what speaks to us of peace. I dream of playing games with my friends. I dream of the day my dog and cat get along. I dream of the day I dream of going camping in the mountains. <laughs> These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. Today, we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. The first scripture reading is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, 
and you will quickly see why those who compiled our lectionary placed the beautiful passage from Isaiah that if it, you're like me just makes Handel's Messiah start resonating through your brain. Why they paired that beautiful reading from Isaiah with this announcement of good news. This is indeed the very beginning of Mark's gospel. He tells you right off the bat, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And he begins not in a manger, not with stars and dreams and wise people from the East, but with John the Baptist. Hear now these words of scripture. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As is written in the prophet Isaiah, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of the repentance of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all of the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt about his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Would you please pray with me? Holy and loving God, as you begin the good news once more in the anticipation of the life of Christ, the coming of a savior, begin again in us that we might hear you rightly and live faithfully. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Like many other parents, when our children were small, we used to be able to trick them into a few moments of peace and calm by asking them if they wanted to have a quiet contest usually played in the car, we'd say something like, let's have a contest and see who can be the quietest until we get home. And sometimes we would even sweeten the pot with the offer of a quarter for the winner, whoever could stay silent the longest. The lure of competition and the promise of reward often gained us a good five minutes of peace, which in those years, and especially in the car, felt like an eternal blessed silence. As our children got older, the silence was not so easily bought, and we sometimes resorted to simply imposing quiet when the noise in the car got too loud. Or if we were lost or in traffic or otherwise stressed, we may even appeal for quiet more as a threat. Will you just give me a moment's peace? But that kind of peace, peace born of anger, or enforced by intimidation is really a misnomer. It might be quiet, it might make them sit still for a moment, but it is not peace. Peace, as the Bible defines it, shalom is the Hebrew word, is not fearful or cowering, rather shalom or peace as described in scripture 
scripture implies not simply the absence of conflict, but also the presence of the blessings of God, a full and whole life, fertility for the land and joy in the community. While frustrated parents or military dictators might be content with pacification, peace on the surface only is not peace. Historians teach us about the Pax Romana, the peace of ancient Rome imposed on the lands they had conquered. And indeed, when that military superpower had sway over the known world in the time of Christ, there was a certain calm that prevailed, but it was the calm of domination and the peace of cooperation enforced at the point of a spear. And it was not the peace promised by the prophets or the psalmists. It was not the shalom of God, which goes so much deeper than surface peace and superficial calm, which reminds me of a story I think maybe some of you, if not most, might be familiar with. I wonder if you have read or remember the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. When the heroine of the book, Lucy Pavenzi, arrives in the land of Narnia through the doorway at the back of the wardrobe, it is winter in that wooded landscape. In fact, it is always winter in Narnia because the white witch who fancies herself the queen has cast a spell over the land by which it is always winter, but never Christmas, cold and frozen, but joyless. Now there is, as we know, a special peace and quiet to be found in snow-covered woods. If you have ever walked or skied through the woods on a winter's night, you know how calm and quiet the snow can be. And for a season, it's lovely. But endless winter, like enforced peace, is easy, is really suppression by another name. Put a wand in your hand or a crown on your head and you can achieve a certain amount of cooperation and control, but that is not peace. And that is sometimes our mistake as well. We equate peace with calm and control, with placidness, with smooth surfaces and untroubled waters. But peace, real peace, shalom, is not so much about calm and control as it is about life lived fully and faithfully. Order is one thing and shalom is something else altogether. As one author writing about the peace that is promised in Advent put it, peace has to do with the fullness of things, with lion and lamb lying down together, not a world without lions. If Jesus could, on the eve of his own crucifixion, around a table of love and sacrifice, say to his disciples, peace, I leave with you, my peace I give to you, he could not have been talking about calm and control. Their lives like his were about to spin out in disorder and disarray. No, the peace that Christ brings, the peace that Christ lends us is as he says, not as the world gives. It must be a sort of peace of the heart or centeredness of the spirit that Christ makes available to us because it certainly is not without conflict. In fact, Jesus promised us that as well, conflict that is. 
He said, if we follow his way and live his word and love the way he does, crossing boundaries, defying conventions, our lives will know conflict for we will be swimming against the current. We will be moving against the tide in a world that does not truly understand hope and love and faith, a world that mistakes calm and control for peace. Wendy Wright in her Advent book titled The Vigil, Keeping Watch in the Season of Christ's Comings, writes this. The infant in the manger at Bethlehem comes with a message of peace, an announcement that all sad divisions, all the irreconcilable pieces of our public and private lives will be brought together in the celebration of shalom, God's blessing, God's peace. This will not, I think, occur when all conflict has ceased. For creative conflict is a necessary component of growth. Rather, peace will reign when our forgiveness of self and others is wide and deep enough to create new possibilities. And without the use of violence to transform our seeming impasses into new freedoms and joy. Peace, inner Peace is a strength and a quality of soul that does not shun conflict out of fear, but rather may even enter into it, seeking reconciliation and transformation. God's peace will probably look a lot more like spring than winter, a lot more vibrant and alive, disruptive and disorderly than a clean, quiet, frozen surface. Real peace, Christ peace, just might wake us up to something deep down inside of us we never knew was there, changing our lives in alarming but salvific ways. Later on in the story of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, after Aslan, the lion, the Christ figure in this story, has returned to Narnia and the battle to save Narnia has begun, he and the two Pavenzi girls, Lucy and Susan, leave the heat of the battlefield and run to the witch's castle where all is still and quiet and calm. There in her courtyard and throughout her castle are granite-like figures of the creatures and animals she had turned to stone, pacifying them with her wand when they proved a threat to her reign of joyless winter. In a wonderful scene of chaotic freedom, Aslan tears through the castle, bringing the stone-like faithful Narnians to life by breathing on them. They will be needed for good to triumph in this story. And where once there was stillness and silence, now there is movement and noise and excitement and the tumult of life. After his resurrection, according to the Gospel of John, Jesus enters the upper room where the disciples had locked themselves away in fear and speaks these words, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And we know what happened then. The church came alive and not always neat and orderly, but alive, alive from within, stepping into action, engaging in the ministry of transformation and love as messy and imperfect as transformation and love can be. 
but holding on to a peace of heart and a fullness of spirit that the world cannot deny. That kind of peace, the peace of Christ, God's shalom is lived in a world filled with lions as well as lambs. Jesus said, I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so in Advent, we wait and hope and prepare for the one Isaiah said would change the very landscape of the world, lifting valleys and lowering mountains that John said would set our lives on fire, immerse us in the Holy Spirit. We wait for that one who will bring light and life into our lives and into this world that God so loves. So while we wait, while we prepare a place in our hearts and a place in this tribulating world, let us remember his words. Peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Settle for nothing less, my friends, than the vibrant, living, transformative, disruptive, even sometimes peace of Christ. Even now, it is breaking through the frozen surface of a world that all too often mistakes placidness for peace. But be of good cheer. He is so much bigger, so much fuller, so much more than that. The mountains and the valleys are rumbling already. Praise God for the change that real peace will bring. Amen. And now it is the time for celebrations and concerns. Jane is requesting prayers. She has been in pain for around a year. They don't know what is wrong and she may need hip surgery. Carol is requesting prayers for his, her sister-in-law whose 50 year old son died the day before Thanksgiving. Ruth Fittis 
is asking for prayers for Grace, who is in South County Hospital with COVID-19. Michelle Girasol asks for prayers for several friends with COVID-19 or who are waiting in quarantine for test results. Carol and her friends, Beth and JC, are confirmed positive and are quite sick. We hold these names that have been lifted up and more. Those that are on our hearts, perhaps we haven't spoken them out loud, maybe even ourselves in the fear and isolation of this pandemic. So let us bring these concerns as well as the joys of our hearts and lives to God who knows us in every way and at all times. Let us pray. Beloved and loving one who meets us in the turmoil and meets us in the silence, who calls to us with shouts of glory and whispers to our hearts with prayers of peace. Sound now in ways that we can hear you again the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As John proclaimed, let us lift up the word of hope that there is one who will not only be with us, but will change our lives, ready or not, but change them with the fire of love. So we present ourselves, Lord, this world for which we pray, our friends, that we care so much for, our family members who are on our hearts with joy, with concern, with sorrow. And we ask you to work in us your ways of peace, that rather than simply plastering over and making smooth the way, breaks it open with mountains and valleys, tumbling and lifting so that we might find our way to you. Let that kind of peace rule in our lives, rule in our world, the peace that is the shalom of God, the fullness of life for all people. For without justice, Lord, we do not know your peace. It may be the peace of Rome, the peace of the dictator, the peace of the fearful, but it is not your peace. So work in us, O Holy One, that shalom that changes lives, that saves us from our fear and death, that lights the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love fully ablaze in our lives, not just a season, but eternally. We pray for the ones whose names we have said out loud and for ourselves. For grace, and Carol, and Jane, for Carol's sister-in-law and son, for those newly infected and recently died all too much, all too fast, all too sudden in this world, Lord, that is in the grips of this pandemic spike. Be with those who are helping and healing, answering the call to emergent need, who are lifting up prayers, who are teaching and learning despite restrictions, who are braving solace and solitude by themselves at home. 
O oh Lord, be with us, we pray, for certainly you are. We lift up the promise of peace, even in this tumultuous time. May the lamb like dreams of our hearts and the fierce lion courage of our souls lie down together that we might truly live in the peace you bring according to the way of Christ. Amen. these words, peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Settle for nothing less than the vibrant, living, transformative, disruptive even peace of Christ. Even now it is breaking through the frozen surface of a world that too often mistakes placidness for peace but be of good cheer. He is so much bigger, so much fuller, so much more than that. The mountains and valleys are rumbling already. Praise God for a peace that changes the world. Amen. <laughs> 